Just a quick reminder, before you start cooking, you should always wash your hands, and indeed, I had done before I started. I'm just going to make one of my fruit cakes. This is quite a nice simple recipe, which uh, anyone can make, really. And you might have fun making it with your um, children or children. You might have fun teaching your parents how to do it. So it's a very simple recipe. You need flour, you need sugar, you need dried fruit. I've got a variety of different dried fruits here, but you can use anything you want. You need butter, you need eggs, and you need uh, mixed spice and rum essence, but you can mix out the mixed spice and rum essence if you don't have any, of course. And I just remember there's something else I need, which is yeast. Here we are. There's some yeast. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh out one pound of dried fruit. So I'll just turn the scales on. I'm just going to re-zero them with the bowl on. So I want to put in about a pound of dried fruit. And I'm going to make this a bit more fairly than just using dried mixed fruit. So I'm going to put in a few shop dates. And a few. Shop date for cots. Oh, that's a couple of ounces. So now I'm going to make it up to one pound with um, probably just this mixed dried fruit. I did get out some raisins and sultanas in case I haven't got enough of this. You mix anything together you want. Right, there we are. Let's get it up to one pound and dried. Right, nearly there, 15 ounces. 16 ounces, that's a pound. I haven't got it set up in pounds at the moment, I've got it set up in ounces apparently. Obviously you can do this in metric if you want, um, but you're only going to need to remember two measurements. So it's one pound of uh, dried fruit. Now I like to soak the dried fruit in a bit of milk, uh, to, just to soften it. So I don't need to weigh the milk, I just put enough milk in so that it doesn't quite cover the fruit. And then I'm going to add a teaspoonful of mixed spice. If you're using a pound of flour or 500 uh, grams of flour, you want about a teaspoonful of mixed spice. So that can all go in there. And um, yeah, I think I'll put in the rum essence now as well. You don't need the rum essence. Uh, if you're a teetotaler or have religious convictions against alcohol, don't worry, rum essence hasn't got any alcohol in it, it's just the flavour. So I'll put a teaspoonful of that in, it just gives the cake an extra little something. It's a sweetness, it isn't sugar. So this is now going to go into the microwave for a minute or two, just to warm it up very slightly. So if I'm using a pound of fruit, I'm going to need to use a pound of flour. Um, you can use just one kind of flour if you want. I like to put a little wholemeal flour in, but it doesn't matter how many different flours you mix together, you're going to need about a pound in total. Oh, I need to zero the scales again, because this bowl doesn't weigh the same as the previous bowl I used. So I'm going to put in about four ounces of wholemeal flour, and then I'm going to make the rest up with ordinary self-raising flour. Um, a lot of recipes suggest you use plain flour and baking powder, but that's really just exactly the same as just doing the whole lot with self-raising, so I just use self-raising to keep life simple. So I want a, a pound of that. Obviously it doesn't have to be exact. There we go, that's about a pound of flour. There's a hole in the bottom of this bag. I'll have to do something about that in a minute. So that's a pound of flour. Now I'm going to want half a pound of sugar. So 
sorry, I'm going to want half a pound of sugar. So I'm just going to zero the scales again, because I'm using, a, again, another different bowl. Oops, a bit too much. Still a bit too much. Don't want to overdo it on the sugar. That'll do. Good. Right. So those are weighed out, and I'm now going to put them to one side ready for use. That's called en place in French. Putting everything en place, meaning ready to use. And what else have I got to weigh out? I've got to weigh out the, um, the butter. Uh, for this recipe, I'm using a 9-inch cake tin. You can use a 7-inch one if, you, if that's what you've got. Um, and if you want to make... So finally, I need to weigh out the, uh, the uh, butter. And I'm going to need half a pound of butter. So however much flour and fruit you use, you need half as much butter and sugar. It's a bit cold at the moment. Might have to move it up a little. Right, well, I'll turn it back on. And that's nearly nine ounces of butter, so I just need to cut a bit off the ends to bring it down to half a pound. I'm just going to cut the butter up a bit. So I want to mix the butter with the sugar. So just to make it a little easier for myself, I'm going to soften the butter in the oven. So what I need to do with this is to mix in some yeast and let the yeast what I need to do now is mix in some yeast and get, let the yeast activate. So I'm going to put in just a little bit of extra sugar. There's probably enough, enough sugar in the dried fruit itself, to be honest, but just a little bit of extra sugar to make sure that the yeast activates properly. And one of the reasons why I've warmed it up, apart from the fact it softens the fruit better, is that the yeast needs a bit of heat to activate it. Whoops, that's far more than I need. I normally use about a teaspoonful of yeast. Now you don't need the yeast to make the cake rise, but what it does do is it turns it into a sort of a fermented cake, which means it's a bit kinder on your digestive system um, and um, you, you can digest it more easily and get the uh, nourishment from it more easily. Um, people used to cook with yeast because they had to use yeast to make the, the, what they were cooking rise. In my case, I don't need to do that. But what I do need to do is to uh, use a bit of yeast, partly for the flavour it gives, and partly because it's actually just quite good for you to eat food that's got some yeast in it. So I've finished with the scales now, so they can go away. So while I'm waiting for the butter to be ready, I'm just going to grease the inside of the cake tin make the cake easier to get out. I use an old butter wrapper for this, or in this case just one of those silly bits of grease with paper that on top of on the top of the spreadable butter that comes in tubs. Quite handy because I've got just a little bit of butter on which is perfect for making the cake tin ready. So there we are, it goes down there ready for when the cake is mixed. That's right in the bin. bowl's hot so I'm just handling it with oven glove or a tea towel or something 
and there's all the flour that's leaked out of my... So I'm using a mixer, so you can just shove everything in and mix it all together. But I find it's a bit easier if I mix the sugar and the butter first. For every eight ounces or 250 grams of flour you use, you're going to need one egg. So I used a pound of flour. Eight ounces is half a pound, of course. So I'm going to put two eggs in. So crack the egg on the side, break it in half, drop it in. Try not to drop it in the bowl like I did with the last one, but it was all right. I didn't end up getting any egg shell in there. So now it gets a good old mix up. I think I'll put the milk in next. I don't want to put the fruit in yet, so I'm just going to pour the milk out of the bowl that's got the fruit in it into the cake mix. And a bit of a mix up. Finally, in goes all the flour. Well, not quite finally. Obviously, there's the uh, there's the dried fruit to go in. So that's all nicely mixed up. So the last thing I'm going to do is to add the fruit. Normally I would also put some cherries in, but I haven't got any, so I have to do that. So mix it much more gently once the fruit's in there, because you don't really want to mash the fruit up. some cherries. They were hiding underneath my lemon juicer. Right, let's just turn this off. I put a few cherries in and mix them in and then I put a few on top of the cake because it's always nice to have some on top of the cake where they can be seen. These are quite useful for scraping your mixing bowl out with. So I'm just going to put the cake now into the cake tin. Probably best at some point after you've added the um, added all the ingredients and mixed them all together to leave the cake for an hour or two so the yeast can get to work but it seems to do reasonably well if you just do it more or less straight away so that's what I'm going to do this time and one thing I did forget which is that I normally put a little bit of sugar on the top to make the top crisper and a little bit of milk over the top to make the top browner so I'm just going to put the last lot of cherries in and then I'll do the sugar and milk I obviously don't know where the cherries that I mixed in ended up in the mix, but I'll space these ones out more or less evenly. You can put as many or as few cherries in as you like, really. It doesn't make that much difference. Um, they do taste really nice when they're baked in a cake, but to be honest, it's more... I can push this one down underneath because it's split in half and put a, put a whole one on the top. Um, to be honest, it's more sort of decorative thing, really. And of course, people have great love competition over whether or not they want the pieces the slightness with the cherry in. So, so now, just for a finishing touch, I'm going to sprinkle a bit of sugar on top of the cake to make it crisp up on top. And I'm going to sprinkle a bit of milk on top of the cake to make it brown up on top. There goes the milk. Just a little bit all over the top. And next, into the oven it goes 
to bake until it's cooked. I'll test it with a skewer when I think it's done. And if the skewer comes out clean, it is done. Or if you want a slightly soggy cake, if the skewer comes out slightly soggy, then it's done. So in just a minute, you'll see the cake being um, tested after it's cooked. Took the cake out of the oven a few minutes ago. It's still quite warm. That's what it looks like. Here's a skewer. I tested it before I took it out of the oven. There's a skewer going in. You can see it's coming out clean. So the cake is completely cooked. And you just need to give it a couple more minutes to cool. Run a knife around the edge, and then I can loosen off the clamp on the on the cake tin and get the cake out. All done. It's still a bit warm, so it's still a bit crumbly. It'll set a bit firmer when it cools down. Lovely when it's hot, though. So there we are. The um, fruit cake is much less crumbly now that it's uh, cooled down. Very nice indeed.